So this review will be spoiler free, and I will not be rating the game out of a number per se, but instead trying to give you reasons on why you should or should not pick up this game in general. So let's begin with a rating so as such I lied to you. Sonic Forces is a 10 out of 10 game, and I will tell you why in one phrase. Nope, actually just one word, you ready? Knuckles. And I'm not trolling, just hear me out though. People say the Sonic fanbase does not know what it wants in a game, and I disagree. Because I actually think it's the opposite. The Sonic fanbase knows exactly what it wants, but the problem is the fanbase now spans almost three decades, three generations. And at this rate, if we get classic Sonic in another modern Sonic game, we will have a third Sonic Generations game. Now for simplicity, let's say the classic generation of fan was 1990-2000, the adventure era was 2000-2010, and the modern era is 2010-2017, since generations are about a decade. And what I mean is you grew up in this era with these games, not necessarily were born in this era. Take it like this. If you went to a restaurant and you did not know what you wanted, the restaurant might recommend you something and you might even be satisfied with what they recommend because you didn't know what you wanted. Or if you weren't satisfied, the critique would still be reasonable. This is more like three people of three different burger preferences trying to order the exact same burger, all asking for different things on it, so the restaurant giving out a mess of a burger that none of them enjoy as a whole, though maybe they enjoy bits and pieces individually. So when it comes to Sonic Forces, your enjoyment of it will depend on which era of Sonic fan you are and what you're honestly looking for in a Sonic game, which is our first point after making you wait like 10,000 years we're finally going to get into Sonic Forces itself. Avatar the Movie, aka Sonic Forces, definitely has Sonic's name on it. Sonic is in it, he's playable even, which is something many of his allies do not get to share in the ability to do of late, cough almost 10 years, cough, but I honestly think the selling point of this game was the Avatar character. So as a Sonic fan of any era, you might actually end up enjoying this part of the game, depending on if you like character creation, or even had a made up character you used to pretend to be when you were younger, or still do, I don't judge, you know, live your life. But otherwise, this part of the game might be best received by those of us who are only recently getting into Sonic games, or are growing up on Sonic games like that third generation, who might still like physically run around and play Sonic with their friends, and now see a game where the character they pretend to be is something that they can make in a game alongside Sonic. So, young, younger, or older but not old, anyone within the Sonic fanbase can enjoy the concept of a creative character. The idea of being a far more useful insert to Sonic than Chris Thorndike ever was will probably leave most satisfied. Within the game, no, the character creation does not leave you with a lot to start with, and the detail of character creating is not on the same level as, say, a game like Saints Row the Third, but I personally am okay with this because I did not expect a super deep character creation tool. However, you can play through the game and unlock more things for your character as you go along, and even create more characters after beating the game with all of the things you've unlocked. Now for gameplay, I'll break this down into two sections, the characters themselves, and then as a fan of each generation, if you would enjoy it. Starting with Classic Sonic. All jokes aside, Classic Sonic was probably going to be in this game whether Mania was a hit or not. By the time Mania came out, Forces was already in the last stages of promotion and marketing, far past production. Classic Sonic has a lot of platforming that fans of Sonic Generations or Mania will probably even enjoy still, while having the same speed on things like downhill slopes, which anyone who's even played a few Sonic games will know, always go into ball mode on downhills. Classic games, ball mode on downhills. Even Speed Highway in Sonic Adventure 1 and the gun truck in Sonic Adventure 2, ball mode on downhills. It is called rolling around at the speed of sound, not running. They are literally giving you a hint. So when you review this game and forget that, so that you can have a point of criticism, I'm just gonna be led to believe your controller was broken and did not allow you to do what everyone else already knows how to do. Now to be fair, running full speed and still not making it up a hill or cliff or wall or something, it does be bothersome. It breaks the momentum, the immersion even for some, and can be a legitimate pain point in classic Sonic levels. And in comparison to other classic Sonic games, this might not feel as fluid in motion as previous titles. But overall, I would say classic Sonic gameplay wise is still solid, and the music, sans maybe like one level and you know it when you hear it, are bangers. Which is expected of even the worst of Sonic games, the music is just always good. Looking at you, Flame Core Volcano in Sonic 2006. Modern Sonic Still using the skeleton success of the day levels in Unleashed, speed for modern Sonic nowadays is more focused on boosting instead of boost pads, which some fans enjoy. Boost pads, while well, they did their job in the past, for some felt clunky, and the boost mechanic was very welcome. 
In Sonic Forces, this theme persists. The main issue is, however, levels are already so short, you might not feel like there's a lot of interaction there in terms of being able to appreciate the level itself with it not just blowing past and then being gone in a moment. Now mind you, this is a hedgehog who can break the sound barrier, and in some games even light dash. So realistically, Sonic blasting through stages with Sonic Speed as a thematic fantasy, thank you Riot Games, is fine. As fast as he is, if it took Sonic a half hour to get through a stage that was not like a final stage of a game, we'd have to tag him out, get him a Gatorade or protein shake, and send him on a vacation because something would just be wrong. Combine this with the removing of the drift mechanic though, and modern Sonic levels can feel like they fly by for better or worse. This is not to say that that's bad though. If that's your thing, like speedrunning or just blasting through levels really fast, you like severely enjoy that, then these levels are like a dream for you. And it really depends on what you're looking for in modern Sonic stages. Avatar The Last Wispender Again, I feel the Avatar character is the focal point of this game, so in actuality, so too is their stages as a mix of platforming from classic Sonic and 3D dashing about like modern Sonic. Combine this with the Avatar's ability to use several different wisps and interact with the stages in different ways, aka replay value, and in my personal opinion but not fact, the Avatar stages are the best stages in the game in terms of blending both kinds of gameplay. The middleman, if you will, which definitely makes your character feel relevant in a world of characters with super strength, speed, and flight. Avatar stages are not void of level length problems, similar to Modern Sonic, which the reason that's a problem is in some stages, they're actually like well done design, they're beautiful, or they have something going on in the background that's actually really, you know, important or big or just nice to see, but you can't fully appreciate this because by the time you realize that's going on, the level is over. Now, as a classic generation fan, you can enjoy this game and is it worth playing? Honestly? Sure. It will not, though, beat Mania for you, and it will not top classic era Sonic games for you, but what it will do is hit your classic Sonic kick if Mania was not enough or just left you wanting more. While there may be the whole momentum issue, if you hail from the classic era as a fan, it probably will not bother you or even be a problem to begin with. The platforming is there, giving you some interactivity with the classic Sonic levels as well as the speed everyone originally fell in love with in this era. Furthermore, the Avatar can add some more to your experience if we are saying that a classic Sonic fan's enjoyment is rooted in a mix of speed and platforming because both are present in their gameplay as well. Modern Sonic then will probably be the lacking of the three playstyles for you as they're kind of just designed to be speed above all things in their levels. Now as an Adventure Era fan, it will be more of a coin flip I think. While some may not be bothered at all by just boosting through modern Sonic stages as they like that in Unleashed and it continues here, some might still like a little bit more interaction with his stages in terms of platforming, and while possibly quirky, the Sonic Adventure games and other games in that era had more of. The coin flip mainly being though the boost mechanic, as it did not exist in the older games, so it might not be an issue at all for you because maybe you possibly dislike boost pads and actually feel that modern Sonic plays now and how he plays now is how he should always play from now into the future. This means you might be the reverse of the classic fan. You might like modern Sonic stages the best and are actually bothered by platforming as it slows down a character that should be otherwise speedy. Otherwise, you might too enjoy classic Sonic and Avatar for what they provide in platforming that modern Sonic won't necessarily have. As much of, it's there though. Now, the modern generation fans honestly will probably have the best chance of liking this game the most as they will not have a bias of any of the previous generations to work on. For some, this might be their first Sonic game period, so even if people say it, it's bad or it's a bad game, it, this just means that they have nowhere to go but up then from this game. Others, because of their lack of bias, may then just love the game for what it is. A way to insert yourself into a game with one of your favorite game icons and have an adventure. Reviewing gameplay here is a bit difficult for this particular era because I, for example, have a younger sibling who just likes gaming period and does not have any ideas of what Sonic should or should not be. They're just as satisfied that it is Sonic, period. The music goes without saying, I believe, it is overall unreasonably great between nailing the classic hi-hat and classic Sonic stages, along with vocals and sound instrumentals for Sonic and the Avatar. Plot without spoilers means I cannot dive too much into this outside of what everyone already knows. So first let's look at Infinite for a second. Okay, Eggman took over the world and you must take it back. A refreshing concept and is welcome in a franchise where Eggman is causing trouble but usually never succeeding. Well that is different here. Eggman 1. Ivo is a household name 
And you better love scrambled eggs because that is all that will be served ever. The one drawback of this plot without spoilers is that the levels feeling so short, the pacing of this plot is definitely too fast. It would be similar to playing a game like Sonic Adventure 2, finishing City Escape, and then within the same hour, boarding the Space Colony the Ark. In the Dark Story. Now, this is not necessarily a negative, some people do not want a long and deep storied Sonic game. So this is just a pro for you guys. It is a con though for anyone who is looking to try and take several sit downs to beat a game, or at least one rather long sit down, despite, you know, it not being that long. Depends what you seek in a Sonic game to be honest. Which brings me back to my first statement of Sonic Forces being a 10 out of 10 because of Knuckles. For me, all I want in a Sonic game is for my older favorite characters to be playable, and for them to feel like they are actually characters and not generic stand-ins in a game that would not have otherwise missed them if they were not in it, like Lost Worlds. And while I don't mind Knuckles providing some comic relief at moments, I like the character because of who he is as a serious duty-minded guardian who, while gullible, is in fact not stupid, just ignorant. Let's be fair. He was alone on his island his whole life. We as players knew Eggman was bad and Sonic was good, but he would have no idea to know about this. So getting tricked was fine there. Let's be real. In Sonic Adventure, the Master Emerald was in pieces for the first time. And by then, Knuckles did see Sonic as good, but carefree and not above collecting the Emerald pieces for himself. And he had to act first with everything that was at stake. Let's be true. Both times when he was made aware that Eggman was to blame, he immediately U-turned on him and allied with Sonic not mindlessly him hawing around about what to do next and if he could count to three or not like a meathead or something. Guard the Master Emerald, keep it out of wrong hands since the world ends if it ends up in Eggman's master plan. Gullible, my life was on an island alone, no fun. Gotta take everything in a serious tone so I get tricked, putting the fate of the Emerald above all. But once I find a July Eggman, expect a house call. So while I still want a game where Knuckles is playable, which even the likes of Sonic 06 gave me in some of Sonic's levels, when they at least characterize him as intelligent like in Sonic Forces, I do find value in that. And you may not. You may not care at all. You may care, but for another character, and I think this is my final point of the video. Why I am not seriously giving this game a rating is because you might value the complete opposite of everything I explain in this video. You might agree with everything I mentioned in this video and even do not care about potential flaws. Surprise! Turns out you're an individual, so you have a different view on things. The world could wake up tomorrow and decide Sonic Forces is the best Sonic game ever made. And if you do not think that, then that's fine. Same in reverse. It is why other Sonic games have mixed opinions depending on who you ask. Some still love SA2 as a flawless game. Some love it as a very flawed and very problematic game, but still love it despite its flaws. And some love, you know, Sonic Riders, Sonic 06, The Werehog, etc. The franchise of Sonic games spans so long now, and I feel the one thing Sonic Forces does extremely well is to try and encompass that so that to the point you can ultimately enjoy this game or at least something in this game, if not the whole game. You like whatever you like and do not let public opinion decide that for you, because sometimes you may find fun in things that others do not. No, Sonic Forces is not the Super Mario Odyssey of Sonic games like some people hoped. Super Mario Odyssey being a game that old Mario, new Mario, and even never Mario fans can enjoy, and if you have never played or gotten into Sonic, Forces is definitely not the game to start that. If you, as a fan, are someone who cares very little about the criticism of recent titles and have enjoyed those games anyway, then for the 40 bucks you should probably pick up this game. If you are someone who has not been satisfied with recent titles, however, and are searching for something a bit more, you may still find this game simply okay, not good, but not bad, and as such, try rinsing it instead. The bottom line, Sonic Forces is not the Sonic game to jump into the franchise with unless you care very little about what fans have criticized about Sonic games in recent years, or have no bias like pre previous fans. For what it is, the music is great, the plot is solid even if it's not the deepest or longest and kind of rushed, and the three variations of gameplay means you might actually find an enjoyment in one if not multiple of the game styles even as an older fan. Personally, for what I want in a Sonic game, there are signs of life that shine through, but there's still a ways to go, and if you have not enjoyed Sonic games in recent years, I would actually still enjoy, or recommend I should say, renting this game because you might get enjoyment out of something. So that's all for this video. If you watched it this far, thank you so much for watching. I know the title isn't necessarily the most honest, but let's be real, if I did name it something like that, you probably wouldn't have watched this video because you, you know, wouldn't have most likely watched the video for me, unfortunately. I get it. It's fine. But ultimately, hopefully you did get something out of this video, whether you're someone that's been looking to pick up this game 
and maybe you're not wanting to wait till the holidays, so you want to pick it up immediately, but you're just unsure yet, maybe this has given you something. If you're a parent, maybe shopping for your kid for Christmas, you don't know anything about Sonic, and you're just kind of like, well, they seem to like recent Sonic games, would this game be okay to get them for Christmas? Sure. Um, but ultimately, I think it really does depend on what you look for in a Sonic game, if you will like it or not. I will say I think Forces does have enough variety, though, that even though you might not like all of it, you might like a single part of it, and that might be enough for you. Who knows? For 40 bucks and the life it is, it's a what and what. So I won't give it a specific rating, but I will say that, and kind of just end the video here, if you have any comments on anything I've said or want me to explain something more, or if you want me to do like a spoiler version of a review so that I can get more in depth on certain topics, I'm willing to do that, but comment in the comments below and ask me for stuff like that. But that's all for this video. So thank you so much for watching this video this far if you did. I don't know which video will be next, because life be quite a mess. So until next time, take care from the Fargo FS. And again, thank you for watching.